this is Aussie Mac Zone. We'll cover everything Apple, including Macs, iPhones, iPads, and more. All this from an Aussie perspective. Sit back, relax, and insert yourself into the zone. The Aussie Mac Zone. Hi everybody, welcome to show 274 Aussie Mac Zone. Uh, tonight we have Zahn, how are you buddy? Great Michael, how are you mate? Very good thanks mate, very good, good. cruising and all. So uh, tonight we are brought to you by IT Help To You and Aussie Tech Heads Podcasting. Now our Aussie Apple ramblings this week, Forbes tells us Apple reveals surge in app store success with huge uptick in developer payments. The Apple store is successful and is part of Apple services division, which CEO Tim Cook repeatedly tells us is very important to the company. In Apple's London offices the other day, the company held a special behind closed doors event with Olivia Schusser, Vice President of Apple Music and International Content. He confirmed that the service division, which also includes Apple Pay and iCloud storage, is on course to be a $40 billion a year business. That's not bad, eh? He also reiterated that the App Store, which now hosts over 2 million apps, continues to pay substantial figures to developments, to, to developers. Apple has previously said back in January that the total developer earnings over the 10 years of the App Store were $120 billion. But one of the most intriguing announcements today was that payments to European developers specifically are now more than $25 billion. Wow. Now, the reason that's so interesting is the last figure given was $20 billion back in June last year. So that's pretty good, isn't it? Right. $5 billion in six months. Yep. It's not a I bad make, uptick. Yeah, I, I, make, I make that most weekends, but, you know. <laughs> you said $5, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. We're, we're okay. Now, yep. So uh, European app developers have been paid $5 Billion, there's the billion. See, I've left that bit, which equates to 20% of entire European earnings over the first 10 years. Wow. This feels like it could be a record. European earnings are growing fast, it seems. It's a lot of money, isn't it? It's a lot of money. It really is. Like $5 billion is a huge amount of cash. Yeah. yeah. For 25 million, 25 billion. <laughs> Phenomenal. For selling, just selling stuff. Like, yeah. And that, that's, they're our apps and our, yeah. um, you know, Fortnite purchases yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah, we are thinking about having a live call-in period in the show and we'll we give you a number to call and that will put you in a room where you can still hear the show and then we get to ask, you'll get to ask us a question or make comments. So we're just getting that organised and testing it, make sure it's all all right because it's not software that we designed or develop or anything. So Excellent. That sounds like so much fun. It does. Hello, Lisa, who's watching at the moment. Excellent. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. Hopefully, you'll be able to ask us a question soon. That's right. Yeah. Now, Zahn, you had a discussion with a friend this week about a big iTunes bill. I did. So, if I remember correctly, they found a bank withdrawal by Apple Proprietary Limited for, for, I think it was about $84, $85 or something. Yeah, $85. Yeah. yeah. They had not got a normal emailed invoice when you buy, say, an app, for example. That's right. So then you got them to ring Apple and say, please show me where I authorised this purchase. Yes. And then Apple said, "Well, the, what, so, then what happened next? So yeah. we went through the emails first. So when we went through the emails, we noticed that there hadn't been a receipt sent uh, to their email address since about late December. Okay. Um, yeah. So there was no email there, so that seemed a little bit sus. Uh, so yeah, we then called Apple to ask uh, why they'd been charged that much and uh, where where was the authorization for that charge? Yeah. Uh, turns out that there was no authorization. Um, it was a sneaky little backdoor that the app had itself where it self subscribed uh, uh -huh. to you and then decides to charge your iTunes account uh, eighty five dollars and. Um, 
so no one authorised this charge. So, okay, and yeah. and was it installed? I can't remember what you said. Was that the app that the they app told you it was? The, the app was installed. Okay. Uh, yeah. But there was no mention of a fee. Uh-huh. Um, it was a child's app. And it was just like an ABC touch app. Like you can touch it and learn to spell or play with numbers. Uh -huh. uh, that sort of stuff. Um, I think it was called Tiny Taps. And um, yeah, and they secretly decided that they were going to, you know, charge $85 for this app. And so they rang Apple. Apple was like, no, that's not correct at all. You can't do that. Uh, so what they did then is they unsubscribed to the app and, and got rid of the app and Apple were absolutely happy to refund that money. So, so it was a great experience for them, yeah? Yes. And and not too hard? Absolutely not. And the service that Apple provided was fantastic. So, Excellent. That's good to hear, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's great. Good to hear. So I'm glad your friend worked it out. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it was a good experience because we were able we we're, were able to you know come back and say you know this was wasn't yeah. hard uh, <laughs> it was a great experience uh, except for losing the money but you get it back yeah, yeah. Uh, you know and uh, you yeah. should have, you should have charged them eighty five dollars for your support I know I should have actually now I think I'm thinking of it I at least one half <laughs> <laughs> now a reminder this week we are brought to you by it help to you www.ithelptoyou.com.au Apple support business. So, yeah, any, you're not sure, look it up, make a phone call. Um, it is my company and I tend not to answer too many calls that are marked, uh, you know, the contact's not in your phone book or whatever, no contact. I tend not to answer those too often because they're generally, you know, someone trying to sell me a telephone contract or something, so. Um, yeah, ithelptoyou.com.au. Just yeah. email me, ask me a question, anything you want to know. Like I was about to say <laughs> that. Your best bet is to email. That's how, how Michael works. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know something, you send email. So there we go. If you can't get a hold of him, you could also text, I guess, and say, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, I've got a couple of FYIs. Just a reminder that Siri is generally contextually aware. So if I am in an email and say, hey, S-I-R-I, please remind me of this on Saturday at 10 a.m., Siri will create a reminder with a link to the email. And then on Saturday, it'll send an alarm off and I'll be able to click on that, go in and go directly to that email. Just, you know, the... And it does that within other other parts of other apps. So just be aware that Siri is contextually aware. Yep. Um, some other good news. Apple Watch again has been credited with helping save several lives. Excellent. With the AFib and the ECG reporting. Yep. You know, so one guy had um, his watch told him that he had his AFib come back and so that they were able to you know, help him straight away and an ECG uh, did report it, ma it made it quicker for the doctor to go, okay, we'll go and run a proper test right now. And yeah, just, you know, not arming and ahhing and going, oh, well, well, we'll see how you go for a week or whatever. They just went straight in and did a proper test. Well, that's fantastic. It is. So I'm just wondering, and I should, I should got to make a mental note right now to email Apple's media team and ask them when we hope to get the ECG approved in Australia. Yes. And it's coming handy because funnily enough, I had a, a friend of mine pass away uh, not too long ago. And again, he, he did have heart uh, trouble. Yeah. Uh, and he said he was feeling a little bit off. Uh, they, he went to the hospital and they said, oh, it seems to be okay. And sent yeah. home and he, you know, you've got a specialist appointment in a fortnight anyway. Yeah, you know, they send you home. He's all right, and three days later, he passed away from a heart attack. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a, you know it, it happens, but it, with you know, yeah. this, this technology, you know, being able to do that sort of stuff, it, it, you know, it does save lives. It's a fantastic piece of equipment. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. So now, Google Doodle celebrates Steve Irwin's 
Hang on, what did you say? Google what? Oh, there it's it is. Go Google it, yeah. Celebrate the Steve Irwin. Google Doodle. Uh, yep, that's the one. <laughs> the original crocodile hunter. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Irwin might be remembered for his wild antics and fearless love of crocodiles, but Google also remembers him as a family man. Crikey, Google is covered in crocs. The search engine was decked out with fangs and claws and scales on Friday. Yes. Google Doodle celebrating legendary Australian outdoorsman and the original crocodile hunter himself, Steve Irwin. Launched on February 22nd on what would have been Irwin's 57th birthday, yep. which also, incidentally, this year's National Wildlife Day, Google's latest Google Doodle, <laughs> Google Doodle. Google Doodle shows an animated Steve in his element, exploring the great outdoors, feeding crocs, kissing a snake. But the most heartwarming of all are the illustrations of Steve with his wife, Terry, and kids, Bindi and Robert. Now, the Google Doodle comes almost 13 years after Irwin died suddenly in 2016 when a barb from a stingray pierced his heart while he was shooting a documentary off the coast. Trying to help the stingray, actually. He, yeah. The stingray is caught in some sort of line and he was trying to rescue yeah. that, that animal. Yeah. Now, while the shocking news made headlines around the world, Irwin's family have continued his life works promoting wildlife conservation. But an Australian animal rights organisation... Not an Australian. They're a worldwide animal rights organisation. Okay. The, the news did say Australian. Anyway, okay, yeah. um, they, they tweeted, Steve Irwin was killed while harassing a ray. He dangled his baby while feeding a crocodile and wrestled wild animals who were minding their own business. Today, Google Doodle sends a dangerous fawning message Wild animals are told to be left alone in their natural habitats. Uh, that's what they they tweeted out. So, um, but the Aussies were quick to come down hard on Peter, absolutely slamming them for a disgusting rage marketing and yep. dragging a beloved dead man's name through the mud to get more eyes and clicks. You know what you're doing, rage marketing works, wrote Ryan McGee, and another ad added. You will get more comments and attention than normal, but your propaganda has ceased to have the effect it used to and have, and frankly, you have plummeted to a disgusting depth. Absolutely. Celebrity is calling for the organisation to shut down its social media Excellent. with the tweet gaining thousands of retweets. Um, Peter are pests. Yep. They have no right to even say that they're animal activists. They are not. So, They're media whores. <laughs> they've, they've got, so excuse yeah. my language. <laughs> that's what happens when you um, go for go for clickbait. That's right. Basically, even yeah. Australian basketballer Andrew Bogut said Petter should delete its account. Yep. So yeah, so he had this great little drawing, etc., and then someone picked on them, and the um, internet went into meltdown for a little while. It did. It went off. <laughs> It was absolutely crazy, and, and what they did was wrong. Like he, he's done so much more than Peter has ever done yep. for animal activism. Uh, activism, I can't even say the bloody word now. <laughs> and um, <laughs> but you know, and awareness for young people and old people alike about endangered species. And yeah, you know, he he was an amazing man, and his work does still continue through his family. How dare they? Yes, do this? yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah. Here's an interesting one. The Cult of Mac informs us a student faces lengthy prison spell for drug dealing iOS app. Drugs on a college campus, and to paraphrase an old Apple slogan, it turns out there's an app for that. <laughs> Created by an 18 year old University of California Santa Cruz student, the Banana Plug app, which is to do with the university's mascot, something about a banana slug or something okay. now the banana plug app allegedly allowed customers to place orders for drugs including cocaine molly and shrooms whatever they are <laughs> from the comfort of their ios devices howard then communicated with buyers via snapchat to set up the sale authorities say 
Now, the illicit entrepreneur allegedly put up posters advertising the the app around the university campus, and he was busted when a campus police officer, in coordination with Homeland Security Investigations, went undercover to buy various illegal drugs using the Banana Plug app. According to the Department of Justice press release, upon discovering the posters and the application, I saw it. I wonder what the poster said. Buy drugs off me or something. Like, it can't have been that plan. <laughs> um, a UC Santa Cruz police officer, in coordination with HSI, used the application to request a purchase of marijuana and cocaine and then communicated with Howard via Snapchat to set up the purchase. An undercover HSI agent made that purchase and separately continued to communicate with Howard on Snapchat to set up three additional purchases of controlled substances. The third and fourth purchases were for more than five grams of methamphetamine. And at the fourth meeting, a U.S. Santa Cruz police officer arrested Howard before any payment was made. How did the banana plug drug app get approved? We don't know. But authorities arrested Howard for distribution and possession with intent to distribute in November, arrested on the federal charges uh, Howard was released following an initial indictment. He faces a potential of several decades behind bars and millions of dollars in fines. And needless to say, apps that promote illicit drug use fall afoul of Apple's terms and conditions for the App Store. However, sneaky developers continue to w- find ways to circumvent Apple's guidelines, as in taking the money from your friend, for example, is just another sneaky way of doing it. And this... Um, the way you know, there's, there's a few more people have been found out about the same way that uh, Facebook and Google were doing, doing some things with the uh, special um, with the uh, development, the developer. The developer yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And um, so, so he's made this app at uni Yep. To basically, it was basically so the campus could communicate through with each other. Is that correct? Did I, am I getting that right? Yeah. So, so that the he's made an app. Yep. Um, like like when the local pizza shop makes an app and says, "Come and buy food from me." He was not selling food. He was selling something else. Yep. Um, how how he specifically described it, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's just. That's insane. So, somehow he got away, and somehow he somehow yeah. he got it through the Apple. With and like with what we say, how many million of apps are there on the store now? That have, yeah, and but not just that. That's it's unbelievable. Like that they got through for one, and then it worked. But only a stoner would think that would work. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just gonna make an app and uh, sell people drugs. No one's gonna even catch on. Yeah, yeah, and then he just sells drugs to the police, and then he puts it up on posters. I know, like, like again, <laughs> kids don't do drugs. No, turn, otherwise you no. come up with idiotic ideas like that. <laughs> yeah, so that's just one unusual story this week. <laughs> now here's some good news. Apple reveals how to be an expert photographer through these neat little tricks. So you got yourself the latest iPhone and want to learn how to fully utilize the camera and photo features, you're going to like what Apple just released on their YouTube channel. The company posted four short videos covering some features and tricks to take your photography and photo management skills to the next level. The first video demo demos how to select a key photo for your live photos. A key photo will be the preview image of the live photo and live photo is where it does a little bit of video and then the still. Yep. And you can decide which which is going to be the key photo. This makes it easier for you to recognize the photo as well as organize your gallery previews, making them look neater. Now, the second tutorial video teaches you how to fully utilize the depth control that was introduced on the iPhone XS and XR. This feature allows you to adjust the background blur on your images. Awesome. 
So um, I like that. It that, is. That sounds I, really cool. I'll, I'll come back to a really cool story about that one too in a minute. Now, in fact, you can also adjust the background blue even after taking a picture by editing a portrait image and adjusting the image's aperture. The third tutorial is on using the stage light mono, which was introduced in the iPhone 10 and 8 Plus. Yep. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you already know this feature as it was highlighted many times by Apple prior to the launch of the mentioned phones. Now, there are also lighting effects you can play around with if mono light doesn't suit your fancy. And finally, Apple also provides a tutorial to search for images quickly in the photo app. You can search for a particular object or person by simply typing it in the search bar. This is a familiar feature to what Google Photos can do as well. As long as your iOS device has the photo app updated, you will be able to use this feature. Now you're ready to be a master of the iPhone camera and photo app. Now, just getting back to that, that one about blurring the background. Yeah. Um, Apple made a good little ad showing this blurring the background just recently. They did. I remember yeah. it. And it talks about um, the mother saying, oh, did you just blur my son? Why, why are you blur my son? And she, then the other person goes, no, well, I can see I can take the blur away now. And she says, oh, who blurs out someone's son? That <laughs> was great. I've seen the ones before that when they were showing off the new camera. Yeah, um, and yeah. they were doing the blurry backgrounds and, and stuff like that, so you could bring it made the you know the people in the photo come forward, you know, yep. and, and that sort of thing. Yep. It was a fantastic ad, and it worked really well. So, uh, now, also we are brought to you this week by Aussie Tech Heads Podcasting. Now, we're part of the Aussie Tech Heads Podcasting, as you know. There's Aussie Tech Heads on Thursday night as well. Um, so and it's also uh, Aussie Tech Radio is part of the Aussie Tech Heads group, which has just got other Australian podcasts uh, that are playing twenty four seven, updated every week. And as I keep saying, stick it up there in the background and keep so listening. It's you great. Can hear, you could hear our voices all day and all night. That's right. Something to dream. Or yeah. go to sleep by one of the That's other. That's right. Yep. Both. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, yeah, Aussie Tech Heads podcasting. Don't forget. And we're going to have some news about uh, Aussie Tech Heads and their new web service that they're setting up. So excellent. It's, it is excellent. Now, more f FYI, courtesy of iPhone Life. Now, this is just put up with me reading this for a bit. So how to find out what those emojis are called. Emoji symbols add a touch of whimsy to text messages, notes and emails. But did you know what their names are besides the pink flower or the other pink flower or um, yeah. dead dudes one and two or the Smiley not quite full moon? Yeah. Is it waxing or waning? Uh, I can never remember. The easiest <laughs> most hilarious way to find out what these emojis official names are is to have your iPhone read them out to you. Say what? So Garth, Garth would already know this, of course. Of course he would. <laughs> so again, to quickly find the name of your emoji, first go into settings, tap general, and then you might want to t share this one with your friends, of course. Yep. Tap accessibility and then tap speech. Toggle speech section to on. Next, open notes and type in the emojis whose names you want to know. Tap and hold anywhere in the emoji text to bring up the options menu and tap select all and then tap speak. Your iPhone will now read you the names of the emojis. You can, of course, also use the speak selection to read any selectable text on your iPhone in Notes, Mail, Safari, and other apps, but it will not be nearly as much fun as <laughs> creating your own little story. I really want to try this now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go home and try it with Mason. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> now, 
And anything, any stories you want to mention, Zan? Uh, let me try. I thought I had something. No, no, we did. We spoke, already spoke about the. Yep. No, yeah. I, I'm good. Yeah, because the eighty-five dollar thing. Yeah. yeah. Because because we're nearly reached the end. I've, I'll just um. So, there is a story that uh, apps have been giving Facebook sensitive health and other data. Um. In part of you know Facebook's way of managing things and getting their all, all their data sorted out. Um, some apps have been giving them data that you wouldn't expect. Uh, I wouldn't expect my health app to, to, to give uh, any information to Facebook, but apparently some health apps have been, or you're, um, and this is where you're actually typing in what you think's wrong with you or, you know, that sort of thing. Um, that's that's just one other story. It's another challenge that Facebook's going through at the moment. Geez, they're getting a the hammering this year already, haven't they? Yeah. Um, now, they they don't. Facebook says they don't ask for the data. It's just that some apps are actually giving it to them. They're not declining it. They're still keeping the data. Of course they are. <laughs> well, we're not asking for it. They're just giving no. it to us. Yeah. And, you Let's know, go we back might, to that we... guy who made that app to sell drugs. Remember that guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sounds so, similar, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. And this sensitive data may mean nothing until Facebook starts to lose money and then they might, might find customers for the information, yep. which is Basically, Google weren't interested in using all this this massive amount of information they'd gathered in the first place until they hit um, a snag when we had all of that IT. You know, like the the um, all the banks went went yep. to kaput and stuff with our our um, the financial crisis. That's the one that I was trying to think of the words for the financial crisis. And then the investor said, well, you need to work out something to make money. Yep. And they said, oh, we've got all this data to sell. <laughs> Jesus. We, we'll be able to use it for looking after ads or targeting ads better and things like that. So it just, you know, circumstances change. You, you get massive circumstances change in places like Egypt, for example, where they change from one, one major religion to another and back again. Yep. And the, all the rules change like they get turned on the head from one to another yep. without picking on any religions. I'm just saying, like, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. That's right. That's um, another another report that um, I left out this week is uh, Apple and one of the big uh, finance companies in America. I can't think of it. Anyway, it, it's very targeted at America, but... Uh, so Apple Apple Pay of Apple yeah. and uh, are thinking about coming up with their own credit card with this finance company and whether that's what they're going to do or not, I don't know. It's, it's obviously something that's being touted around, but yeah, I would have thought Apple probably, they're probably using the finance company to um, speed up the process maybe. Um, but, you know, you can have your bonus points, but instead of being flybys for air tickets, they're going to be, you know, get a, get a thousand points off for your next Apple purchase, whatever that might be, for example. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's <laughs> why not? <laughs> so yeah, that's just another story that, you know, Apple coming out with their own credit card as such. So now yeah, don't forget show no the, the show notes uh, link each week on the show upload and the link being aussiemaxzone.com.au and then you can go in and see the last five weeks of show notes at something like aussiemaxzone.com.au slash episode whatever it is that's almost the way it goes um, now Spotify just search for Aussie Max Zone or Apple News I did post another uh, Apple News story this week specifically on I got some more spam email from quote the Australian government asking oh, yeah. for some details so that I could get get a bonus or some crap. Um, Even if or, it was the real really Australian nice. government, you wouldn't give them that details anyway. We know That's how right. they are they, at the moment. <laughs> they've already got all of those details. That's right. 
but yeah, yeah, they want a name and address, telephone number, bank details. Of course they do. Driver's like a copy of your driver's license, like all the crap under the sun. Wow. Please, please don't give it to anybody. Don't give it to anyone. This is a scam. No. It's a scam. Just if they want it. You can go in New South Wales, for example. We just go down to the New South Wales Services Office. Yep, RMS. Yep, and and go, here I am, and they'll go, what the hell are you talking about? Exactly. Like, it's unbelievable that places like Woolworths and JB Hi-Fi and Coles have got to put signs up saying the taxation office will never ask for iTunes cards for payment for <laughs> an outstanding debt. Like, it's just... <laughs> I know. That, Please make sure your friends know. That's very exactly. important. Please make sure your friends know. It's important. Know. Yeah. Now, thanks to our sponsors this week being Aussie Tech Heads Podcasting yep. and IT Help to You. Yes, thank you. And most importantly to our supporters, you, our listeners. Thank you. And over to you, young Zahn. Well, I'd like to say, first off, uh, if you're looking for the um, Irwin, like Steve Irwin uh, cartoons and stuff like that, don't go yeah. into Google and type in Doodle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and on that note, thank yeah. you to the sponsors. Thank you to our listeners. And remember, an apple a day keeps the endurance away. See you guys. Thank you.